So welcome back guys to another video and today is yet another episode of games I've been playing. This is one of my favorite segments on the channel because it gives me a chance to talk about a wide prefla of games spanning on different consoles and platforms and you know most importantly talk about my backlog maybe talk to you guys about what you're playing we can talk about these games and most importantly maybe if you're having some gaming burnout and you're wanting to check out something new maybe when you walk away you'll have something new to play by watching this. So anyway guys, let's get into it. So the first game I wanna talk about is a game that my friend James sent to me on Facebook. He sent me the trailer and he was like, man, this game is right up your alley. And he is so right about this. This is totally up my alley. And that is Panzer Paladin. Panzer Paladin is on Steam and Nintendo Switch. It's uh, developed and published by Tribute Games. And you know, what's crazy is this game gave me certain nostalgic feelings of playing indie games. I mean, we play so many indie games out there, but I almost felt like almost a Shovel Knight kind of feel when I was playing this. A highly polished retro experience that's trying to be something new, but at the same time, uh, give tribute, no pun intended, to the company, to the games they grew up with. Now, the story itself is not that elaborate. You're trying to stop this uh, weaponized demons from taking over the world. You're playing as Flame and she's piloting this uh, this mech, this paladin. And you get different weapons within the game. And everything from swords to axes to hammers to of course more comical things like baseball bats and golf clubs and tennis rackets. But each weapon has a certain status and certain health bar. Yes, the weapons do break, but you can actually break the weapons if you want because every weapon has elemental power and you know magic to it. Or you could just bank all the weapons that you collect throughout each stage, go to the hub inside the mothership and boost up your status, boost up your health. So there's a lot to this game. It's very, you know, point A to point B, but that's not a bad thing. It's so much fun. And one of the things I really did enjoy about the game is the fact that you could actually jump out of the mech in some parts of the game and play as Flame herself. And she almost has kind of like a Indiana Jones Belmont kind of feel with her whip. Uh, she doesn't have a she doesn't have a whole lot of health, so you want to get back into the mech as soon as possible. But I thought that was a nice little element, a nice little you know nod to games like Blaster Master. That is a game I definitely recommend you guys check out. Now, if you guys remember, uh, just a couple of weeks ago, I did a video of my top 10 favorite PlayStation 1 games. And, you know, funny enough, I was on Facebook and my friend Chris, aka DC Radia, was playing a PS1 game that I'd always known about, but I never actually sat down and played it. He was playing Jay Cocoon, and I was just like, man, he had just beaten it. He was, you know, leaving a status, reviewing it. I'm like, man, this game sounds kind of cool. I kind of want to check it out. So I went ahead and booted it up, and I started playing it, and I... I really wish I didn't wait as long to play this game. This, this is a really good game. Now, Jake Coon came out, and I think when it came out, it was around the big heyday of Pokemon, because it really does have that sort of influence of, you know, virtual monsters and virtual pets sort of thing. But the story itself, I have to say, I like more than any other Pokemon game. And I've played a lot of Pokemon games, because you're playing as this kid, you know, it's in this tribal village, and you're playing as this kid who, you know, he's about to get married. He's got his wife all set up for him. He's about to just, you know, maybe become a J. Cocoon master like his father, who he has no idea where he went. He went to the forest. He went to go fight, and he never returned. Come to find out he's the chosen one. There's, like, these demons that take over the village, and everyone's asleep. It's your stereotypical anime trope, but, oh, my gosh, it is so freaking fun. And... What I have to say as well, it's not a very long game. See, I have to confess something to you guys. You know, with my life the way it is, being so busy, I don't mind short games, especially short RPGs. Uh, I feel like it's more realistic. You know, someone could tell me, hey, this JRPG is awesome, but it's only 10 hours long. And I'm like, oh, do tell. So you mean I can actually finish it? Because I just don't have the time, unless I'm reviewing a game, I don't really have the time to sit down and play like a 40 hour plus game anymore. It's very seldom that that happens. There's always something I relish, but it doesn't happen often. But I cannot recommend Jay Cocoon enough. 
I believe it is on PSN. If you still have a PS3, you can probably download it there, or maybe you can play it on the Vita. I will say the only caveat to J Cocoon is it has tank controls. I forgot how bad tank controls were. They have not aged well at all. And I almost felt like I was, um, you know, learning how to walk again. I thought maybe, you know, it's like riding a bike. You don't forget. But I totally forgot how to function in tank control settings. But once I got the hang of it, I, I definitely stay, stuck with it, and I really do enjoy it. I cannot recommend it enough. Jake Coon is awesome. Thank you, Chris, for talking about it and refreshing my mind and being able to replay this game. Now let's talk about some PC games. I've been playing a lot more on my PC lately, on my laptop, and let's talk about some fan-made games, because I've played some fan-made games that were pretty awesome. Uh, first off, I want to talk about Sonic 2 HD. It's a fan-made Sonic 2 game, and it's built from the ground up. Now, unfortunately, it was never finished. It's only the first three worlds, but oh my gosh, man. I never thought Sonic 2 could look any better than it already did, but it looks so good and it plays well. That's the most important thing, is that the game plays like Sonic 2. Uh, sometimes we get some of these HD remasters or remakes and uh, the controls don't feel as authentic. They feel like floaty or they, they don't feel the same. Where it just, this felt like I was playing Sonic 2, but I was playing it in a much better setting and I cannot recommend it enough. I'll have a link on the description below so you guys can download it and play it. Uh, it does support controllers. Uh, I was playing it with a wireless uh, PS4 controller, so yeah, have at it. And I've been reading a lot of comics lately. I'm, I'm not trying to segue to anything here, but I just want to mention I've been reading a lot of comics, and especially uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, the IDW series, and I've gotten really big in the turtles again, you know? I've been like, man, I really love Ninja Turtles, and I was thinking, I was like, man, I want to go back and play a Ninja Turtle game, and you know, I, I was sitting there going through my collection, and I forgot I had this game downloaded, this fan-made game called Team NT Rescue Palooza. And may I say, I think this is the best interpretation of Team NT beat em ups ever. Uh, you know, I love the, the classics, you know, like Turtles in Time and Manhattan Project. I love those games, but this game takes all those titles that we grew up with and makes them even better. You can tell this was made by Turtle fans. It has even, you know, voice clips from the cartoon, uh, music from various games, various uh, refinishes and face jobs to different levels. But most importantly, you play as more than just the Turtles. Every stage you go through, you actually unlock two good guys and two bad guys. For example, I went through, you know, April O'Neil's uh, building. So I unlocked, you know, Verma. I unlocked, uh, you know, uh, April I unlocked you know two two bad guys that maybe like slash and bebop or bebop rocksteady you know that, that's what you do you unlock them and when you go back to another stage you can play as either a bad guy you're gonna play as a good guy you don't have to play as the turtles and I thought that was something very different and I thought it was like wow this is this is a new way to play games that I grew up with and I cannot recommend it enough uh, just like the Sonic 2, I'll have a link on the description below so you guys can download it try it out and again just like Sonic 2 it has controller support so you can use the ps4 wireless controller like i did or an xbox one controller or some usb controller like 8-bit dough it's so much fun And the next game I want to talk about is a game I've been wanting to try for some time. I found it for a good deal on Steam, and that is My Friend Pedro. 
um, by Devolver Games, and man, this is this is a really interesting title. Uh, Story-wise, I can't really say too much. I'll be honest, I, I was skipping through the whole story because this is such an action-packed game. I feel like the story is kind of irrelevant. I just know there's a banana that follows you around, tells you what to do, but it's the gameplay that really makes this game sing. Uh, the fact that you have like bullet time, something I haven't seen since Max Payne, you know, going in slow motion and, you know, taking Uzis in different directions, jumping on skateboards. This game is a high adrenaline ride. It's so much fun. Now, I will say something that it really reminds me of, though, uh, funny enough, it reminds me of those old Newground games. If you guys remember playing um, on Newgrounds back in, back in the 90s, playing those stick figure games, that's what it made me think of because it's very... Very lanky, if that makes any sense. The controls and movements are very lanky, but it's not a bad thing. I think it adds uh, polish to the, the gameplay, and I really do enjoy it. Uh, it's not a long game. It's like four hours long, so that's something I really enjoyed and something that I would definitely see myself going back to and replaying uh, sometime in the future. In this game, I've had a lot of friends uh, recommend this title to me. They were like, man, if you love Castlevania, if you love Dark Souls, you need to play this game. And that is Blasphemous. I got Blasphemous on Steam. I went and checked it out, and it's good. It's it's really good. It's, you know, it's very Dark Souls inspired. Um, it's a 2D hack and slash Metroidvania. Uh, so it has its elements of Castlevania in there. Uh, the art style is probably one of my favorite things about the game because it's, it's blasphemous, so it's very sacrilegious. It's very, you know, satanic and macabre. It's very edgy, but it, it's a lot of fun. But it is a very hard game as well. I mean, I, I don't know if I would re recommend this to everyone. Um, I think, for me, the difficulty wasn't the game itself, but your overall progression of where to go next. The navigation is kind of cryptic with riddles, so... you. you I'm definitely probably going to be going into a walkthrough when I play this game because I definitely want to finish it. I want to go back and play some of the DLC that just came out for it. But I mean, I have to concur just like everyone else. If you're a big fan of Dark Souls, if you're a big fan of Castlevania, check out Blasphemous. It's a lot of fun. And again, it's a little indie title uh, made by, you know, a Spanish company. And I would love to see, you know, a Blasphemous 2. I'd love to see uh, this team you know, just soar in success because this game definitely deserves So the last game I want to talk about is the game I wanted to save for last because I know not everyone is a big fan of Animal Crossing New Horizons and I know I've talked about it in the last couple episodes but I definitely wanted to touch base and talk about the update that came out in August and my impressions of it. Um, okay so in August we had an update where you could go to a fireworks show and another element of sleep. Now what I mean by this is you can actually get, in, get inside your bed go to sleep, you're visited by this anteater named Luna, I believe she's an anteater, and she sends you to a dream world. And what's really interesting about this is all these dream worlds are other villages. Now, you do have to have a dream code in order to go to these other villages, and you know, some, may, some people may be asking, you know, why is this a thing? What's the point of this? And I think it's just make things more streamlined if you want to visit someone's village, but you don't want to take the time to you know, open up your gate or you don't really know them too well and you don't want them to mess up your stuff, uh, this is a good alternative. So my girlfriend and I got our first dream code on Twitter. Uh, she was like, you gotta check this town out. So I went to it and it's this nightmare village. I mean, I could not believe everything that was going on. I was walking around, there was like blood stains everywhere, was stuff all over the walls, you know. The town theme was Michael Myers, uh, you know, Halloween theme. It was really something interesting, and you know, I've went to a couple other dream villages, and overall, it's been it's been really cool seeing people's different ideas and getting getting ideas yourself for your town, and 
you know, it made me realize that my town isn't as cool as I thought it was. I mean, some of the stuff that people make is amazing. It's freaking awesome. And, you know, I do want to close uh, Animal Crossing talk with some, some tea, some drama. Something I've never seen happen in an Animal Crossing game. You know, because I've been playing Animal Crossing since the GameCube. And, okay, so me and my girlfriend have been playing Animal Crossing New Horizons. I had a villager named Patty, this cow. I could not stand her. I could not stand her. And I was very mean to her. She ended up moving. She moved to my girlfriend's town. My girlfriend didn't like her either. She was mean to her. She ended up moving away. And we we're like, hey, Patty's gone. Ding dong, the cow was gone. So we were really happy about it. Well, I had a villager move out. All good. I was expecting another villager to come in. And sure enough, Patty came back. I've never had this happen before where a villager left, went to another town, left for like a month comes back to the original village that I met her at and she still recognizes me. She still knows who I am. She still calls me her like little sidekick nickname and stuff. I, I, I don't know what to do. <laughs> no, but I thought that was really, really interesting and stuff like that. And I, I cannot recommend Animal Crossing New Horizons enough. It's definitely one of my top five favorite games of 2020. I've been really enjoying it. It's, it's become a tradition for me and my girlfriend. We get up in the morning, we grab our switches, we check on the turnip prices, I make my cup of coffee, I go out and have a cigarette, we come back, and we buy stuff from new nooks, cranny, and, and stuff like that. That's just the way it is. And I, I love Animal Crossing New Horizons. I cannot recommend it enough. But anyway, guys, uh, those are some games I've been playing recently. What have you been playing? Leave a comment below. I'd love to talk to you guys about it. Uh, and even if you've played some of the games I mentioned in this video, let's talk about that. What do you think about some of these titles? I'd love to hear from you. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe, but also hit the bell so you're notified on all future videos coming out on this channel. As always, guys, thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing, and as always, happy gaming.